What if I told you a big report came out from a reputable firm saying over half of the stuff launched in crypto is a pump and dump scheme ready to fail? We're also going to talk about Celsius exiting bankruptcy, which is great for the market. But what if I told you their plan has to do with crypto, but it ain't the Celsius you knew from before? An XRP, gaining clarity from Torres, secondary market not being a security, yet we've erased almost all the price gains. Are you buying this continuous dip as we've got automated market makers set to go here in two weeks, clawback features, Chris Larson's personal wallet's getting hacked. Let's talk about everything going on. Oh, that live stream was juicy yesterday. I hope you didn't miss out because we all learned a lot. Jeremy Touche dropping major support on the channel. Thank you very much, sir. Jeremy was there participating in the Q&A. I will have that video linked at the end because there were a lot of good Q's and a lot of good A's. Turbo Lag says the news outlines why I've stuck with XLM. They're less sexy but also less slippery. Disappointing price action for sure. But does anyone find it interesting that GXLM has been trading at 2.5 times spot value? USDC is about to pass XRP in a few months. This is coming from the great falling away. Probably in the spring, ADA will pass XRP as well, locking down the number eight spot. XRP will get knocked off the top 10 by Christmas for its first time in existence. Once XRP loses position in the top 10, they'll likely never see a top 10 spot again. Are you thinking this too? Are you buying the continuous dip? Heat map looks green, but when you zoom out, it is redder than red. Bitcoin sitting at 40,445, ETH 2291, XRP. By the way, automated market makers going live right around Valentine's Day, sitting at 49.8 cents. Now, XLM already has automated market makers and clawback features and liquidity pools didn't do shit for the price. So be very, very careful out there with your expectations, thinking that the change for XRP is going to yield juiciness when XLM already has those features. So yeah, I, I, I don't see it. All right. Chainalysis reports exposes the majority of pump and dump schemes end in failure. No kidding. Chainalysis delved into the pump and dump schemes and discovered that between January and December of 2023, last year, 370,000 tokens were introduced on Ethereum. Of those, 168,000 were accessible for trading on at least one DEX. Among those listed, 54% met the criteria of potential market manipulation. 54% of items launched that were on DEXs with Ethereum scams manipulation. 54%. If you wonder why a lot of money is staying away from crypto, maybe it's because more than one out of two things out there is a complete scam or manipulated. That's not good odds. That is, now, now, most of us here think 99.99% of crypto is total BS. But for big reports like this, and don't worry, I'll have this all linked in the description down below. This is a new channel. I bring news, good or bad. I got some good news coming up with Celsius, by the way. But think about that. More than one out of two is a scam? That's not good. In 2023, malicious entities collected gained $241 million through these potentially unlawful schemes. <clears throat> All right, we're going to talk Celsius, and then we're going to swing on over to Ripple XRP News. Celsius Network starts distributing $3 billion to creditors. <coughs> Ooh, baby. They emerged from Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Okay, so y'all remember Mashinsky and Celsius. They declared bankruptcy about two years ago in June. And it's been a big mess. Um, the court stuff has been a mess. And what's happened through this whole thing, and what I've been keeping an eye on, is what is Celsius doing as a company to stay around? This is really crazy, but I, I kind of think this is a good thing, but it also tells us where the majority of these crypto companies are thinking where the money is going. So Celsius isn't going to be an exchange anymore like what you thought of. Celsius is going to be way different. Crypto lender Celsius initiated the distribution of $3 billion worth of cryptocurrency and fiat to its creditors, signaling the official resolution of a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This comes 18 months after the suspension of user withdrawals. Yeah, 18 months people didn't have their money. Well, according to the company's statement, a portion of $3 billion will be allocated as part of Celsius Network to approve a reorganization to establish Ionic Digital a new Bitcoin mining company owned by the creditors. Celsius Network creditors will take ownership of the Bitcoin mining company through common shares with the anticipation that these shares will become publicly traded 
following the company's attainment of necessary approvals. Additionally, Miami-based mining company HUD-8 is set to supervise Ionix mining operations as part of our four-year management agreement. So they're like, yo, we're getting out of crypto. Ain't no money to be made here. What are we going to do? We're going to get into BTC mining. That's how they're going to pay back their creditors. 18 months people have been without their money, and the plan now is to distribute some of the funds that they got from when they burned their crypto, right, sold it, you know, transferred it over to fiat, but also money that they make from Bitcoin mining opportunities. That's really interesting. Ripple CEO denies compromise amid security rumors. Yeah, Ripple was not hacked. It was Chris Larson's private wallets that were hacked. The hack, representing the largest theft of cryptocurrency so far this year, underscores the persistent challenges that individuals and platforms face in securing it. So, <clears throat> now, didn't Ripple own Medico? And, and aren't they about custody? And, <clears throat> I don't know, did, did Chris Larson have this on a hot wallet? Um, and they own a custody company? Is there a little irony going on here? Now, that irony has fueled lots of speculation and lots of oomph. Meanwhile, what are we looking at? Torres pump action. Guess what? We've almost essentially erased it. Yeah, got the clarity and have essentially erased Torres pump price action. Here's the scary part and here's where everything turned. It was on January 2nd. Look at this. We started it off with a high of 63.7 for that day. And we ended with a low of 53.8. We essentially lost about 18% on one day. And since then, it has not recovered. The moment it breached 60 and then tried to, yes, breach 60 again going up rather than down, has not been able to hold it. And now here we are, two days in a row of sub 50 cent price action. Now, I know you're following other news outlets out there. I know you're following Twitter, other social media groups out there. I know the fam, right, hanging out on Facebook groups. I gave you all a shout out on the live stream yesterday. So shout out to the GB Crypto Group fam. Thank you very much for hanging out with us in the live stream yesterday. But we're circulating a lot of information out there and a lot of people are getting frustrated. They're getting frustrated because they're like, oh, bro, 589, bro, riddles, oh, adoption, utility. like. Whatever narrative is going around, people are looking at the price going, but, but bro, it's down. And, and this reminds me a lot of those football games, all right? U.S. football. Sorry for my U.K. fans and European fans out there, but U.S. football. It's like this. It's like your team is up 28 to nothing, right? You're just blowing the other team out of the water. And your quarterback drops back to do a pass, and he gets sacked. Now, mind you, you're winning 28 to nothing. It's the fourth quarter with two minutes left. And this dude who just sacked your quarterback is doing like the Superman pose. He's flexing. He's shoveling the shit. He's stomping. And you're like, bro, look at the score. You're losing. And that's kind of how I've been hearing XRP holders describe this. Like, everyone's like, oh, utility. Oh, partnerships. Oh, this and that. And they're like, yeah, but that's cool and all, but it's not doing anything price-wise. Look at the score. You're losing 28 to nothing. It doesn't matter if you just sacked my quarterback with two minutes left. We're going on to the Super Bowl. What are you doing? You're losing 28 to nothing. And I'm starting to pick up on the frustration of a lot of XRP holders. Now, there's some maxis out there, and you're, it's okay to be a maxi. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to have beliefs. I have nothing wrong with that. But the maxis and what they're holding on to isn't yielding the price action. Well, bro, you got to wait. Bro, things take time. Bro, how long does it take to take time? Like I said, the whole XRP price action seriously reminds me of a team. Up 28 to nothing in the fourth quarter, two minutes left, quarterback goes, throw a pass, he gets sacked, they're stomping all over, oh bro, we just wrecked your quarterback. And they're like, cool, we just wrecked you. So I guess what I want to ask from you all is this, what is it going to take to get XRP out of this price doldrum? And are you buying the dip or are you keeping your positions where it's at saying, you know what? We just need more juice before I get back into this. Now, automated market makers, clawback, liquidity pools, those are all like really, really good features. And I'm excited that it's gonna be coming to XRPL. The problem I have though, is everyone thinking that that is gonna moon things. Now, it, it's not like it's new. We, we all know on the 14th now, around the 14th, we're gonna be getting those features, right? So, I mean, it's not like it's gonna shock us. We know it now. So people that know it's coming, they're like, well, if there was price action, wouldn't it be here? Because we already know it's coming, right? The whole buy the rumor, sell the news thing. The thing is though, is the news happened. We have the approval. We know it's gonna be going, but there's no price action with it. And I'm gonna to point to XLM. 
And I'm going to point to XLM because XLM has those same features. And when that launched, it didn't do anything price-wise. It was like this small little pop, and then it was gone in less than like a week later. Now, clawback-wise, a lot of misconceptions regarding that. No, you cannot claw back XRP. Now, the things that are on the chain, yes, you can claw back. Liquidity pools. Do you earn passive income? Yeah. You got to put your juice in that pool, though, to earn it. You just don't hold it by being an, or earn it by being an XRP holder. You have to put it in those liquidity pools. And guess what? The fees are small. They're not that big. So now you're sitting here going, well, wait a minute. Now I'm locking up my stuff and I'm getting little fees for it? This isn't what I thought it was. And, and I think that's where the big problem is coming into play. There's so much moonshot and so much hopium out there. Oh, automated market maker is going to change things. Oh, my God, you're going to be rich. Passive income on XRP, all this kind of stuff. But they're not telling you that other people out there have it, and it's not doing anything big for those protocols. They're great features, but it's not leading to price action. So that's why I'm here to ask you. Are you here for price action? Are you here for the tech? Or are you here to snag that Web3 juicy tail? Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That's right, ladies. The majority of crypto is a sausage fest. And if you're here to snag that tail, <clears throat> girlfriend, you got one hell of a sausage party to attack. Either way, XRP has erased the Torres action. Chris Larson's private wallets were unauthorized accessed. I mean, it's just not looking good. And people are talking about adoption and utility. And all I gotta say is this. Cool, you sacked the quarterback in the fourth quarter when you have two minutes left and you're losing 28 to nothing, what are you celebrating? 